welcome to uh, Apocalypse Network Presents, Devil's Advocate, name pending. And um, I'm Ben, I'm joined by Sean. Hello. And today we're going to talk about the death sentence. Yeah, we like to talk about death. Yeah, some might say we're quite morbid. Yeah, we are quite morbid. Although in this heat I am literally stewing in my own juices. It's like being in that bronze cow with a fire underneath it back in the day. Oh, gross. Yeah. <laughs> that's, not, that's not where you want to be. <laughs> no. Never climb inside a bronze cow. No, it doesn't end well. No. No. Um, so the death sentence, it's yeah. still about in its various forms today. It is. A lot of countries still believe in it. A lot it. of countries still do it. Uh, Britain doesn't. We stopped hanging in, oh God, I think it was the 70s. Was that our main form of execution, was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we used to hang people. Yeah. Um, in America, obviously, we go, we got the famous electric chair. Start yeah. with that one. The electric chair. Yeah. So, 2,000 to 2,200 volts coursing through you. Oh. There's, what, 240 volts in a plug socket, and that can... Can that kill you? I guess it can. I don't think it can. I'm not sure. It just gives you a massive shock. Yeah, you'd it? fly across the room, yeah, probably, if you stuck your wet finger in the plug socket. Oh, if you stuck your wet finger in there. Yeah, it's going to make it worse, isn't it? Yeah. A lot worse. But, yeah, I think it just sends you across the room, usually, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, either way, I don't fancy this one. We've talked about this one before, and I... On our worst ways to die episode. Yeah, and it's, um, it made the list, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. not fun. Because you kind of just burn. Yeah, it's, it's like it bakes you, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like it puts you in a microwave. That's it, it kind of boils your internal organs. Yeah. Can set you on fire. Ow. Uh, and can last quite a while, can last like 30 minutes, 20 minutes. I Do think it, that guy survived for on it. Do your eyeballs pop or something? Is that why they put the mask on? Oh, probably, yeah. Because they would just fry, wouldn't yeah, they? Yeah, just probably melt. Probably explode or melt or something. I something hope that graphic. after I'm dead. I'd imagine it's happening while you're still alive. Oh, I don't want my eyeballs popping when I'm alive. Yeah. yeah. I don't fancy that. I don't fancy any of these, to be fair. Well, no one wants to die. No. <laughs> but if you've done it, if you've done the crime, as they say. Yeah. And then he went, ah, you know what? The electric chair, that might be a bit too barbaric nowadays. So yeah. They went for... Isn't there not still some states that do it? Oh, America? yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's some, yeah. Some have got rid of it. Some use a lethal injection, which is barbiturate... Uh, potassium and chlorine solution with a paralytic. Oh, okay. Uh, I've heard that that is incredibly painful from uh, an account I read where some guy had it and then they sort of uh, got through that it was, he was actually innocent or the death sentence has been commuted to life imprisonment. Oh, okay. So they jabbed him with the antidote and he, and he, he said it was like his veins are on fire. Oh, wow. Um, he just couldn't express it because he was paralysed. Yeah. But once he could talk again, he was ex he was saying he was in extreme pain. Jeez. Said it was excruciating. What a way to go. Yeah. Oh, there's the gas chamber. Yeah, that that doesn't sound fun to me. Hydrogen cyanide, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. Yeah. Um, you're suffocating basically. Yeah, you're just choking to death. Yeah. Um, and there's not even like a passing out. No. So. I don't fancy that. It's, no. Um, obviously, we used to hang people. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I mean, they hung Saddam Hussein. Yeah, they did. Yeah. So maybe they still do that in Iraq, probably. Or certainly yeah. war crimes trials, I think you can still be hung, hung for. Hung, yeah. Uh, beheading. Yeah, the French used to do that, didn't they? The French loved the guillotine. Loved the guillotine. Although it was invented by a Yorkshireman. No, okay. Yeah. But um, they still do it in Saudi Arabia, don't they? Yeah, but they use swords. Yeah. They um, like take you out that's one of the cooler ways to go i think i think it's it's not as uh, fast as the guillotine because the guillotine was laughably seen as being too merciful yeah because you know it's literally a chunk and your head's gone yeah a sword could take a few hacks i guess couldn't it a sword is was seen as being slightly more uh, merciful as well because the sword is designed to cut off a, a, limb. a limb and it's a lot sharper than an axe axes use weight yeah. more than more than sharpness yeah um, Henry VIII executed Anne Berlin with a sword. Yeah. To say because because she agreed to the quick divorce and didn't uh, complain too much. Made it a quick execution. As a mercy, he had her. Uh, he's actually sent to France. Yeah. For their master executioner, sword executioner, to oh, come so over and do it. Clean one swipe. One swipe. That's yeah. it. Rather no. than hacking away at it with three or four swings with an axe. Oh, could be up to five. Jeez. Back of your neck would look like a toast rack. How long are you going to be feeling that for? Till you just stop I, losing I'd imagine feeling? you'd certainly feel the first two or three. Jeez. Yeah, that'd be pretty painful. Yeah. Not a fun way to go. 
Now, the sword I'll take and the guillotine I'll take. Yeah, it's a pretty cool way to go as well, beheading by sword. It's, it's a lot better than just having any... I don't think there's a cool way to go. Well, I'd, ra <laughs> I'd rather go from a beheading with a, with a sword than injected with just some chemicals and you're just lying there unable to move, slowly feeling like your insides are on fire. Yeah, all right, I'll give you that. <laughs> I'll give you that. I don't want. Well, I don't want any of these. No, I don't want any of them. But uh, that's the cool. That's the coolest way on the list, if, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, uh, and firing squad is still used. I think in the southeast of Thailand, maybe. Okay. Um, the thing is with that, <laughs> I read an article about that where there was one guy that did it basically, mm -hmm. and he would just stand there and down, maybe down range, and he would pick up the whatever he was using. Yeah. And shoot them. Yeah. Right. Uh, he started to get like massive PTSD. <laughs> yeah, from killing people yeah. every, every day, pretty much. And probably becoming quite a bit of a sociopath. Yeah. Um. So what they do now is they set up a gun. Yeah. Uh, uh assault rifle, whatever. Yeah. Uh, whatever they're going to use to shoot them. Put the person down there, and then someone who can't see. Yeah. Presses a button, and the gun is fired electronically. Oh, okay. So that kind of takes the personality, the personalness of it, the closeness, the intimate. Yeah. The intimate feel as the blood sprays into the air from that bullet, first strike. <laughs> it's almost erotic. Is I mean, um, um, uh, <laughs> sorry, I got carried away. Did I say, what did I say? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Moving on. Um, yeah, firing squad, I don't want that one either. But then no. again, it's still fairly quick. It is fairly quick. I don't see how that takes away the intimate intimateness of the kill because you're still pushing, it's just a button instead of the trigger, but you're still still doing it aren't you maybe the gun will miss fire you don't know you'll never you'll never know you're pretty certain because i'll be like could you just tap that button again <laughs> <laughs> hey just press that yeah we're having technical difficulties <laughs> i've got a big red button yeah <laughs> either way, i suppose it is taking something away from it yeah. you're not looking at that person as you do it and i yeah. think that's probably well it's almost like um I, we were talking about this a couple of months ago um what film is it is it <sighs> So the army film is it Saving Private Ryan? There's a guy they're fighting in that building and they they they're scuffling over the knife. Yeah, he yeah. He has his own knife taken from him. Yeah. And uh, the guy, I think it's the German soldiers, like slowly forces the guy's own knife into his chest, and he's yeah. just like, no, no, no. And that's like extremely personal. Yeah. yeah well, so hand-to-hand it, it, hand combat in war is extremely yeah. personal. It takes though. it takes a lot to look a guy in the eyes and slowly stab him in the heart. Yeah. As he begs for his life. <laughs> So the, I, kind of, I, I kind of guess that a gun makes it less personal, and then if you take the guy away from the gun and make him push a button while he's blindfolded, that's even less personal. I guess it's like when you push the, the button for a bomb. You, yeah. You know you're killing a lot of people, but... It's taking the, the personalness out of it. Yeah, you're never going to meet those people. That's it, you just you're never going to see those people. You're never going to see the effects your bombs had on those people. Unless you look at the photographs. Or you're captured and shot down and paraded around in the bombing site. But it's unlikely yeah. you're yeah. going to see what that is. So yes, that make, makes sense. Yeah. Um, historically, there's, there's some interesting ones. Um... In India, you could be crushed by an elephant. Yeah, we mentioned that, didn't we? And in yeah. a previous podcast, there's a bad ways to die, like animal kills, being crushed by an elephant. Or being devoured by an animal. Yeah, like a crocodile, or maybe bit by a poisonous, a venomous snake, even. Or the lions in the arena against the Christians. Yeah, yeah. I'd like a rematch of that. Yeah, or, or maybe torn apart with horses. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, well, that's, that'd be excruciating. Yeah, they used to tie your arms and legs, didn't they? And that's tear it. you apart. That's not a good way to go. No. Unless you're being courted. Yeah, a lot of these, they, they don't exist because of just anymore because of how barbaric they are, aren't they? Well, yeah. I mean, blown apart by a cannon was one the British used in the Indian mutiny of 18. I'm going to say. 50 something see this one to me is this one going to be quick or is this one going to be it's, go it's going to be slow. really quick because the cannonball coming out or grape shot which is it's uh, just going to obliterate you isn't it it's going to obliterate you but what it is is that the particular fear of the mutineers was a religious yeah. one yeah they didn't think they'd get to heaven if their body was blasted to bits ah, okay. body had to be fairly intact yeah so, so this was playing on a religious fear ah, okay so like look you want to rebel fine you rebel but if yeah. we catch you you ain't getting to heaven. It's also we pretty will blow scary. You apart as, by a cannon. It's also pretty scary as well because you're shoved in there. It's like really dark. No, 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 no. You you're, you're, stood, like... you're stood with your back to the cannon. Oh, okay, I thought like they the cannon go. The cannon goes with the smaller of your back. Yeah. After they've loaded it. Yeah. With either a round shot, which is a solid iron ball, ah, okay. or a grape shot, which is mus basically like a bag full of musket balls. It turns the cannon into a huge shotgun. Ah, okay. 
Yeah. But you'd use for anti anti infantry. Yeah. I thought they shoved you in there. No, 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 no. They they tied you to the wheels of the cannon. They tied sort you of to like, the like that. Yeah. Arms spread. Yeah. Your back's like against the the mouth yeah. of the cannon. Yeah. And then they obviously just light the fuse and But even still you don't know really when it's gonna go off. Well you'd hear him light it. Yeah, you hear him light it and you know you've only got a few seconds, but it's like you're waiting for that. So it's like the build up is very scary, isn't it? Yeah. Because you're like, when are they gonna light it? They're gonna go off and have a have a dinner break and then come back. <laughs> or how long am I gonna be here for? I'm not gonna go to heaven. That's yeah. gonna be shit. You can hear a lot of noises in the background, which you can't see what's going on, yeah. can you? You know they've loaded it. You're waiting for them to light the fuse. It's like, wh- how long is this gonna take? <laughs> it's scary, I guess. Yeah, and it's just that religious fear. Yeah. It's, that's what it's designed for. Yeah. Um, back breaking in Mongolia. So are we talking like? Bane on the Batman. This one sounds pretty metal, doesn't it? It does. Like, it's just like death I just, by back breaking. Yeah. Like metal. Just imagine them being. You ever like, heard Mongolian metal? It's fucking awesome. Is it really? Yeah. I just got <laughs> visions of them just bringing in this giant Mongolian warrior, just picks him up above his head yeah. and just snaps him over the back. Yeah. It's just like there we go, done. He just walks <laughs> out. Thanks, Harry the Backbreaker. Yeah. And then this guy just kind of lies there twitching for a few minutes. See you you Tuesday. Yeah. (laughs) I guess the reason why they did that is because they didn't want to spill blood, probably because it would have been like, maybe they thought the earth was holy. I don't know. know. It's just fucking painful. Yeah. I don't know the sort of the the religious aspects of it, but if if it's anything like, um, do you remember Game of Thrones? Yeah. With the Dothraki, where it's uh, the Dothraki sort of, they, they are a little bit like the Mongolians, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. If you look at they're them. based on the way yeah, they Yeah, even their sort of huts look like Mongolian huts yeah. a little bit, don't they? They're horse soldiers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know. It's... And it's it's almost like they're not allowed to spill blood in certain places. That's true. And the, and yeah, the, the holy, holy ground, land, yeah, yeah, the holy In the one city, they can't spill blood, can yeah, they? Yeah. Like that. So maybe that was it. Yeah, and uh, he does like to, uh, on, in his books, he does like to kind of base sort of the people he creates, like the kingdoms he creates on real life sort of people, um, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, cultures. Yeah, so and I, I'd say so. they're kind of, maybe it's some sort of religious thing they didn't like spilling blood on, on ground or something. Yeah, on the certain bits. Yeah. Um, the Blood Eagle. The Blood Eagle, we had to add this one in, didn't we? Yeah. This is like the worst way to go. Yeah, I think this was also made the list, didn't it? Um, it was under torture, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, but it was. It would have been at the top, I think. If you if you listed the different torture methods to death, yeah, that would be number one. Right up there with being forced to like listen to like really terrible music for like eternity. Oh, like the stuff you listen to? No, like the stuff you listen to. I listen to awesome music, like <laughs> like uh, outdated uh, rock that all sounds the same. If there's it does no, not sound if you take the, the same. if you take the singing track out, you're like they all sound exactly they the same. They do not. That is a complete lie. All the all the music sounds exactly the same. You're like, which song is this? You probably couldn't name the song. Of course, I can name the songs. I know what they sound like. I know what the difference is. Barney the Dinosaur I wouldn't want to listen to. No. That's one of your really favourites, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess with Barney, man. He'll fuck you up. He won't fuck you up. <laughs> anyone up. I mean, questions need to be asked of Barney. Like, why is he hanging around all those kids all the time? Yeah. With no adult supervision. Barney's probably a pedo. He well. probably is. Hashtag pedo gate. Yeah. Um, um, blood, yeah, Blood Eagle. Blood Eagle. Uh, yeah, so it's the cutting into your back. Yep. Uh, separating the ribs out. Yeah, you're breaking the ribs of those yeah, ribs. Yeah, you're breaking you? the ribs from the back, the yeah. old cut open back, mm-hmm. and then they pull your lungs out through the holes. Yeah, because your, your ribs are like fully opened again. Yeah, your back's on, opened right? up. Your that's ribs why, are out. That's why it says blood eagle, isn't it? Because it looks like wings. Yeah. Yeah. And then they pop your lungs at the back and yeah. just kind of leave you to die. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how long that'd take. I'd imagine probably a few minutes. Yeah. Um, the idea of this is this is like a redemption execution in a way. Yeah, it's a way to regain your honor, isn't it? Yeah, because if you'd have this done and don't make a sound while they're yeah. doing it, you get to go to Valhalla. Yeah, so it's like no. a reward, but it's highly unlikely you're going to get that reward because a lot of people are going to cry in pain. Yeah, because it's excruciating. It's yeah. probably one of the worst ways to die. I'm having my back peeled open and my ribs cracked through. No, yeah. thank you. And then no. my lungs are. I suppose you wouldn't be able to scream once your lungs have been pulled out your open back. I don't know. I would imagine you probably could for at least a few seconds. Well, either way, I'm going to Valhalla. <laughs> You're like, screw Valhalla. Screw Valhalla. <laughs> ah, fuck! <laughs> you fucking pricks. This is even more painful than it sounds. <laughs> yeah, it's an awful way to go. Yeah. Awful, awful way to go. It's going to it's gonna go on for about 10, 15 minutes, isn't it? Because they're going to make it a slow thing. Oh, yeah. Because they want you to scream. 
So they're gonna cut your skin slowly. They're gonna peel your skin back. They're gonna probably crack each rib slowly, mm. pull them back. And each time, they're probably gonna take a break as well. Oh yeah, probably drink a horde of mead. Yeah, crack the ribs, drink the mead, go, are you, how you doing over there? Yeah. Maybe pour some of the mead into the open yeah. wounds just how, to make it hurt more. How you doing, Oleg, you okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Bend the beardless. <laughs> Bjorn. Bjorn the beardless. Why am I getting blood eagled? <laughs> I'm the guy doing it. I you're, see, yeah. You're the guy doing it, yeah. Yeah. You're the guy spilling mead everywhere. Yeah, because I'm pissed. Yeah. <laughs> right. By the way, I'm going to bang your wife after I've done this. <laughs> I'll take care of your wife. <laughs> That one is fun. uh, boiled to death. We've talked about that one. Yeah, we talked like about Like I'm that. being literally boiled to death right now. Yeah, from the heat. From the heat. Um, crucifixion. Yeah, it's like being hung from like a tree or a cross, isn't it? Usually Nailed a cross, in. yeah. How do you usually die from that? Um, but it, apart Loss from of blood, I, infection, a bit of both. Your side split open. Yeah. Um, so you start to bleed. Yeah. It is also, remember, you're up there with no water as well. Yeah. So it's like being strung up there in absolute agony and then sort of dying of thirst, infection, loss of blood. Basically, you know, you're probably just, shitting yourself. Probably you're there soiling for a few yourself. Days, yeah. That's right, you've got to soil yourself. No one puts that in the Bible. Yeah. Um, Jesus, Jesus crap his fucking loincloth, did you? I'd imagine he would, because he would have been there for days. Yeah, for three days. Yeah. Was it three days? I don't or was it all in one day? Oh, yeah, they shoved the spear into his side to put him out of his misery, apparently. Oh, damn. Um, could take a few days. Yeah. You could be up there. And they'd probably just leave you up there as well, you know. They just like you'd be a, a sort of rotting corpse on the cross. Oh yeah, just to show show everyone. Yeah, show, show the enemies. <laughs> That's it. I mean, not a nice way to go. The Romans. No. Then again, if you've been captured by the Romans, there isn't a nice way to get executed. No, by them. there isn't. Um, and then flaying, which I suppose is more of a torture, but you will die from yeah, it. Yeah, you will die from it. Um, interesting fact that if you're performing a recreational flaying, recreational for your own amusement, doing it on the weekend, yeah, just for fun, yeah, then you should hang the victim upside down so they yeah. remain conscious longer. Yeah, why do you know all this? Re- and why is it considered recreation and not murder? No reason. <laughs> What do you do on the weekends? You don't want to know. <laughs> you really don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a good way to go, is it? Because you're going to be alive for a fair bit of this. Oh, yeah, I'd and apparently imagine. you could still walk a bit before you died. Oh, wow. There's people who... Because you'd have guys who are really good at this. Yeah. They could take your skin off inch by inch. Then you'd be fine. And you'd be alive from conscious. Well, you wouldn't be fine. <laughs> no. Um, and then they, they, you could actually get up and walk. Yeah. I mean, you collapse shortly after. You die from the pain, I guess. Pain. Your body shuts down. Body, blood loss. Yeah. You know, but it's it's an excruciating... And it's, you know, these things are a deterrent. Yeah. That's... Well, they're supposed to be deterrent. You don't want this happening to you. Yeah. So play be, by the rules. Behave, yeah. Follow yeah. the laws or don't, don't go to war with us. <laughs> yeah. That tends to be the two reasons why this happens, isn't it? That's it. But, um... Yeah, the, the death penalty obviously now is is limited to those first sort of six, was it, that we said at the beginning? Yeah. So these are meant to be more sort of civilized ways of killing people. They're Certainly, more, well, I wouldn't more say the human was civilized, but yeah. They're trying to outlaw that though in a lot of places, aren't they? A lot of states don't do it anymore. No, but some still do. Is it like they... your southern states? Yeah, predominantly with the yeah. death sentence. They like still. fighting change, don't they? The southern states. I think that's probably an un- the understatement of the year. <laughs> oh, they don't like change. Give up your slaves. We'll fight you for it. I was trying not to bring p- politics into this <laughs> one. <laughs> Give up your slaves. No, make me. Make or, me. Yeah. Learn to read. Make me. Make me. Stop having sex with your sister. Make me. <laughs> <laughs> but we love our American listeners we if do. we have any. We do. Yeah. <laughs> it's only in the deep, deep south. The deep, deep south. <laughs> But yeah. I've seen deliverance. So what? <laughs> <laughs> I know what goes on. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be, there's going to obviously be some sort of areas that are a little bit uh, slow to uh, progress, shall we say? Yes. Let's uh, let's dance around that issue for now. <laughs> Just pointing it out. <laughs> right. So. Uh, but with those six, let's just remind me of those six again. You got the choice of lethal injection, yeah. gas chamber, yeah. the electric chair, yeah. hanging. Um, beheading, we'll say sword or guillotine. Yeah. Uh, or the, the firing squad. Well, the, the man in the other room with a button. Yeah. So, first off, my first question is, taking the first our opinions on it out of the, off the table, which of these do you think are still considered to be too inhumane that you would like to see gone? 
Um, the electric chair. The electric chair. Certainly. I don't think beheading with a sword is a particularly nice way. Oh, okay. But at the same time, it is quick. I, I'm all for the quickness factor. Yeah. yeah. Um, so so you, the firing squad. You think that one should be kept? They don't use that one very often. No, it's, it's checking, literally it's like, it's like a couple of countries yeah, in the Southeast Asia. I was checking Asia. the stats on that. Not a lot of people have been killed by being shot, or like execution by a so shot or firing squad. No, but it, it is used in a couple of places. So I think yeah. mainly it's, they stopped doing it for the, the mental health of the people who are doing the firing. Yeah, yeah. So, so they're the ones you would get rid of then. Is the um, electric chair? Yeah, I don't like the injection. Yeah, not a fan of the gas chamber. I get rid of them all apart from the guillotine. So you think the guillotine is probably the most humane, humane way? Instant beheading. Yeah. Or uh, maybe firing squad. Maybe. maybe a firing squad. Yeah. If it's if you maybe shot by a, a an automated gun, maybe. Yeah. You know, back in the day when they would have um, soldiers would have to execute a deserter or yeah, someone was shell shock in World War One because they didn't understand what that was. Yeah. Um, they would always they would slip a blank round into one of the rifles. Ah, okay. So every guy had the potential of knowing he wasn't the one that fired the fatal shot. That's good. That's a good way of not giving you the trauma. Because you can always say, what if? What if it wasn't yeah. me, I guess? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it wasn't me. Yeah, it was him. But then again, I suppose if the blank round went off, you'd feel the difference in the kick, so you'd know. Yeah. See... I would probably say that the beheading isn't is is fine. Um, Beheading's fine. <laughs> well, it's not fine. Heads on spikes for all. But the only ones I'd the only one I'd really like to see gone is is the um, the electric chair. To be fair, I think the, all the others. Uh, if if we we don't have a choice to get it get it gone, then the um, the electric chair is the only one I'd say that's really inhumane. I mean, what you said about the the guys. Um, blood feeling on fire from the uh, lethal injection it's like yeah but we're not going to see that if we if we if we have if we're the viewers say we're not going to see that and i mean it's the death penalty so he's got to die somehow i suppose before they gave him the paralytic yeah a they'd lot have been like thrashing and squirming yeah yeah but you don't see that so as, as, as far as we know it, it doesn't look that painful <laughs> no so it's, it's, if you were the executioner it's kind of like you can sleep at night because it's like ah he looked all right when he went off <laughs> <laughs> yeah his problem is eyes wide yeah. with pain and well, a fixed glazed we, look well, we even watched, in death we watched that video with the, with the chair and the one guy broke his leg he, vib he shook so violently he broke his leg didn't he yeah yeah because obviously his ankles were strapped to the chairs he, he struggled and shook yeah and he broke his own leg so yeah. that, that one just sounds awful for everyone involved it does it's not I mean being electrocuted is not a fun thing would you like to be the guy that pulls the lever um I guess it's my job yeah you know I wonder how much you get paid for being an executioner I would imagine you'd have to be paid a lot <laughs> be worth a look at <laughs> yeah hey, like in this in this post-covid post-brexit yeah. nightmare that will be britain i might get a job as chief executioner that doesn't sound too bad does he get paid like 30 grand a year you've only got to kill six people a year and the yeah. rest of the time you just sat in your ass waiting for a phone call that's it yeah you're like ah oh, time to go to work <laughs> put my hood on <laughs> <laughs> and your duster just oh, yeah like, pull up the uh the put size, up the thing yeah. yeah pull up the collar yeah and be like right time to go to work grab your murder case <laughs> <laughs> how are we doing it Sword, eh? Okay. Yeah. I'll get my giant blade then. <laughs> well, yeah, because I mean, and the executioner blade is wouldn't have a tip either. Yeah. So it'd be like a fatter end. Yeah. With more weight to it, so the sword would swing better around because you hit them in the, but the middle part of the sword, they added an extra thick blade to the end with no point. Yeah. So it was almost flat okay. to act as a counterweight to get more momentum more behind the swing. More weight in it, yeah, yeah. So it comes down harder. No, no, they'd be kneeling and they would take it from the side. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, with the axe, obviously, it's head down on the block. Yeah. I'd imagine they could do the block with a. With yeah, the, I'm with, sure with I watched sword. the film where they used the but, sword and they executed a woman. They made her put her head on the block and they went straight down. But I've also seen um, illustrations back, and the Saudis, I think, do with them kneeling as well. Yeah. Well, a lot yeah. of them do that thing as well where they stand behind them with the blade. Like that was in um, Gladiator, wasn't it? Yeah. That was how he was going to die. And they, they stick the blade through the back of your head, don't they? Shove it straight down. Yeah, it takes out the spinal column. Yeah. Rips into the chest cavity. I'd imagine that could take a, a, a little while. I don't know. I think the damage it's inflicting would be pretty... Is it quick, is it? I'd have thought so. Because, I mean, yeah. he's going for a start. He's got, they're going through the, the spine. Yeah. So you... Straight away, you you've lost sensation. Your 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 neck is your brain can't communicate with your body. Yeah. 
then that sword's plunging down into the middle of your chest, yeah. where your heart's going to sit. So it's, it's, so it's going to probably tear your heart open, do massive damage to your lungs so as well. So it's pretty quick. So I don't think you'd be on the floor breathing for that long. No. But it's hard to say because some people are just naturally tough bastards. That's true. So, well, yeah, it's true with the electric chair, isn't it? Yeah, that goes like 20 minutes. 20 minutes, that's you, insane. You know, you can never... Um, you can never predict how the human body's really going to... There's probably stories... Oh, we should have done the research, but there's probably stories where they had to use extra sort of chemicals in the lethal injection. Yeah, probably Give them is. a double dose. Yeah. Try and get them gone. Right, so uh, should we get to the nitty-gritty of it now, then? Okay. So uh, where do you stand? Me, personally? Yeah. I'm, I'm against it. I'm, Dead against. Yeah. How about you? I'm going to surprise you. I actually think in some cases it's justified. Oh, okay. Let, let Not me hear all your, cases. Let me hear your thoughts of it first, then. Um, first of all, I think that if you're um, a serial killer, yeah. a serial rapist, yeah. um, serial paedophile, mm -hmm. um, and you are found conclusively guilty, yeah. and your crimes were absolutely horrific, I think the judge should have the right to say... So you're talking about if there's like 100% evidence... Oh, yeah, DNA evidence is or, on. Or he's admitted to it, or, or he's she's or admitted he's to it, yeah. He, she has confessed. Yeah. I don't care if they're insane or not. Yeah. Because why should they sit there in a hospital for the rest of their lives being given three meals a day when there's families out there grieving? Yeah. Uh, you that know, surprised you... me. I thought you would, no. you'd be against it. Um, I'm not, I think that if you're a serial killer, rapist or paedophile, you don't deserve it. Yeah. You don't deserve to be stuck in a cell for okay. the rest of your life. I don't. I don't see how that's justice. You don't deserve. You're not inconveniencing because he knows what he's doing is wrong. Yeah. He knows this is going to happen one day. Yeah. So, guess just what? Do it now. Now you're going to get guillotined. Yeah. Get him gone. Yeah. Just why yeah. keep them alive? I don't see that they offer. They would offer nothing to society. That's very like uh, Rorschach. That is. It's true though. Yeah. Uh, need to get rid of. The, that's my opinion. Need to get rid of the scourge of society. Yeah. Once the scum's gone, everything will be great. Yeah. But no, <laughs> I, I don't think it's justice to keep them. It's giving someone. You've got your stuff you, you, in America. Or well, you've got thirteen life sentences. What's the point? Yeah, he's just keeping this guy alive until the end of his life. Yeah, he's going to be. I mean, all right. I'm not saying he's living it like it's not the Hilton. Yeah, but he's, he's, he's got three meals a day. He's suffering, but not on. enough. Sort of. Thing. Yeah, I don't think he, yeah. I don't think it's punishment enough. Yeah, and prison should be used for minor things. Yeah, and it's it's almost like I get where you're coming from. It's taking up space. It's taking up for space for a guy that's going to be there till the day he dies anyway. So that's what's the it. point in keeping him in, him there? Yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. See, <sighs> mine's probably going to be a little bit like my argument's a little bit religious, I guess. Unless you're like um someone who believes in God which obviously a lot of Americans do and a lot of people worldwide do and you, uh, I believe in an afterlife where you get rewarded heaven or hell mm. unless they have the fear that they're going to hell then the punishment of death in my opinion is pointless yeah, unless they're yeah. terrified of hell and then you give them the they're injection. terrified of hell they shouldn't have been killing people in the first place well they thought they were going to get away with it didn't they well yeah but God knows <laughs> doesn't he or was he turning a blind eye? No idea. But unless you've got the fear of that, I'm sure. But if you're Sean, like, have you killed anyone recently? <laughs> you just know the hacksaw cutting up a body. No. No God. No. No. Of course I haven't. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say carry on to God. No, he says carry oh, on. To okay. <laughs> carry on then. Just like carry on, God. You, you're doing a great job, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> But yeah, unless you've got the fear of that, it's like, what sort of deterrent is that? If you're like an atheist and you're like, oh, well, if I get put to death, that's it, it's over. Yeah, I'm an atheist and I don't want to die. Yeah, but it's like... So him. It's, I don't want to put myself in a situation where I'm going to die. It's like when we watched Hannibal the other day and he said this sort of, I'm going to completely ruin this quote now, but he says something about, there's something exciting about knowing that at any moment you could just die and then that's it, it's over. Yeah. And that makes me feel alive. And it's like he keeps doing it because he probably doesn't believe in a god. So he's just like, well, it's just a game until I'm gone. Yeah, but he's also like, you're using the perfect fictional character who's a total... Yeah, I know, but... The perfect sociopath, and he's yeah. like, I love knowing that I could die. But it like, makes me feel alive. The, you're fear, like, of, okay, the fear of a firing squad isn't going to deter, deter him from doing it, and he's going to keep doing what he enjoys. Whereas if you go, say... Yeah, but Hannibal knows one thing. That what? his crimes are so crazy... Yeah. So, you know, cannibalism, mutilation of bodies. Yeah. He'll plead insanity every time. Yeah, and he'll get away with it. And he'll get put in a mental, mental yeah. institution for life. Yeah. 
Now I disagree with that. Yeah. Because I well, think if you if you if you're mentally ill. Yeah. And you've killed a lot of people. Yeah. I think you know what you're doing. Yeah. Well, th- this comes to my other point. I honestly think first of all, is that the prison system needs reforming. Yes. You, especially in places like America, because like you said, is prisons should be people that, that commit different levels of crime so say if you're a petty thief you stole a a couple of wallets or something you probably shouldn't be put in with a guy that's like low level mafia you shouldn't be in the same cell as him no because chances are if you piss him off he's gonna break every bone in your body and also you're probably gonna end up having to work for him thus coming out or be his gimp yeah thus coming out of prison a bigger criminal that's it. So it needs reform. It needs to. There needs to be, and to an extent, I think England does do this. You get put. No, in we're box. not great either. D- does it not? Um, I, well, I obviously get, they keep all the dangerous people in one place. Yeah, into like, and they do that a little bit in America because you have the max, don't you? Yeah. They're like, oh, be able, or we'll send you down to max, and that's a deterrent because you're like, oh, I don't want to go there because that's where all the murderers and rapists are. But you can't put the like, say like a murderer or a rapist. You can't really put those two people together. One goes around killing a bunch of people, and one goes attacking a bunch of people. Maybe they'd swap they're, notes. They're different levels of crime, and it's almost like it's just going to put these awful people together, and people come out worse for it. So I do think that that needs to be reformed. If, if you have done redeemable crimes, so like low-level stuff, yeah. or you've not really hurt anyone, or you've, like, I don't know, you got into a, a bar brawl, and you put a guy in hospital, and you didn't mean to, you are both drunk, you both went too far... You hurt him. You were in jail for for six months. Yeah. You shouldn't be in in there with higher level criminals because you just made one mistake. That's it. So you need to. They need to send you there and help sort out why you did that and how you could deal with that. Anger management. Do all that sort of therapy. Alcohol anonymous. Yeah. Alcoholics anonymous. Yeah. Reform that criminal. Make sure he's making good friends that also want to work on themselves. Don't make him come out as a frigging high level drug dealer by the time he's done. Yeah. Because he's got used to smuggling drugs in because it's the only way he can survive in prison. Yes, and of course, then he's meeting all these other people who have got yeah. contacts in other things and they're not in there for that long. Exactly. But before you know it, he comes out and he's better connected than he was before. Exactly, and he, he's now thinking, well, I can't get a job because no one will hire me because I'm an ex-con, so I might as well get into this criminal thing full time. That's it. <laughs> and it was just one one mistake. I mean, we'll probably talk about prison reform more, so I won't, I'll digress from that. But the, the reason why... I think this is I think that if you're say a serial killer like Hannibal and you eat people or anything like that is that once they're gone they're gone whereas if you put them in a cell they're on their own play the Barney music play that <laughs> play that forever so you're down for torture yeah but not yeah the death penalty so no. you want them to suffer I want that I think that the death is the easy way out I think they need to suffer for their crimes indefinitely depending on the crime if it's a low-level crime, so well, not low-level, like murder. They killed one person. Yeah. And they knew what they were doing. Like, um, like you told me the story the other day of someone you knew killed someone. Yes. Yeah. We, like that, for example, killed one person. Yeah. Two people I know have killed people. There we go. It's a bit. That's a bit scary. You know, a lot of killers. Murdered them. Yeah. yeah. You're like some might say they might have been framed. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's. I know a guy who killed a 13-year-old girl in a churchyard. I know a girl That's who dark. I know a girl who killed her mom and burnt the house down. Very dark. I went to school with guys who later became members of a pedo grooming gang. That's awful. Um, and someone else I know socially uh, started hearing voices and tried to cut their own head off with a hedge trimmer recently. Basically, don't be friends with you. Don't be. Fr- don't know me. Yeah. Because a lot of Fucking! One of the guys I you went run to, with some dodgy sir. One of the guys <laughs> I went to download with. I used to go to download with. Sadly, passed away of, of cancer. Yeah. This uh, this week. If you if you and were you're like, well, why is everyone around me dying? If you were like a like spiritual person or believed in like psychics or anything like that, they'd say you were cursed. Yeah. Or magic. <laughs> Maybe I am magic. Yeah, you're cursed. Magic with a K. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> I have been getting into tyromancy recently. Have you? Yeah. Okay. That's cheese magic. Cheese magic. The best kind of magic. Oh, I love cheese. <laughs> I've, there's some cheese in the fr- in the fridge. I want you to actually try because it it's good? amazing. I have to give it a go. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know some weird people. <laughs> You've met some weird people. Yeah. In your time, maybe maybe uh, for everyone listening, don't make friends with Ben because you either end up dead or killing someone. You're trying to kill yourself. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think that 
it, a crime like that, you only killed one person, maybe put you in a cell, put you in a cell with other murderers or that sort of thing, and just serve out your time. You don't deserve any of the rewards that, that normal people get. Uh, if you're a serial killer or like a sociopath, like like cannibal or cannibal or something like that, or or a serial rapist, put them in a room on their own in the dark, playing music constantly, the same song over and over again. Let them feel like existence is complete and not a torture. <laughs> Chuck them like you remember V for Vendetta. Yeah. You remember when she's like broken in that cell. Uh, he doesn't break her though. That's the point because she just goes. He there, breaks, Execute me. He breaks her then builds her up. Doesn't yeah. He? Because he gives her that kind of that that fight to live. Whatever they've done to me now is no worse. Than yes, yeah. What but they're it, gonna it, do to it's me? It's almost like it doesn't build up till the end, and he's kind of testing her to see how strong she is. But a lot of people would just break under that. Yeah. A lot of people, and a lot of serial killers would just break under that. And you could keep that going for long. He goes on for oh, what six months. He does Something that like that, yeah. Yeah, you could do it for ten years. She she would break after ten years. Oh, anyone would, yeah. Yeah. And, and eventually we, everyone breaks under torture. Yeah, chuck in chuck in the serial the serial killer or serial rapist, a piece of bread that's all mouldy with worms in it. That's your dinner. And then just play awful music constantly. Awful. Awful. <laughs> Until it breaks them. Yeah, like some of that eighties crap you listen to. Oh <laughs> fucking hell. Emo boy. <laughs> emo boy. <laughs> I didn't listen to emo music. No, I don't care, you had the fringe. I just had the hair. You had the fringe. The hair good enough was for me. popular. It was good enough for me. Didn't you have like really like lot like back Longish length hair. Thing. No, it wasn't that long, but no. it was it was past my shoulders. Is it in a ponytail? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes I used to let the wind blow through it. I bet you look wild cool. I did. <laughs> I used to let the wind blow through it. Yeah. Stand there on top of a mountain. Yeah. Did you used to like your ponytail being pulled? No. <laughs> 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 Believe it or not, sometimes long hair does get in the way and it needs to be tied back. Does it? Yes. Yeah, I bet it does. <laughs> into, pon- into ponytails. No, not pigtails. Yeah, pigtails, no, that's it. No, pigtails. no, no, no. I never did like that. Like handlebars. No. I remember my friend Mike once dressed up in drag to go to a party. Did he? And he had a beard. Yeah. And he had long hair. He did his hair in pigtails and wore his sister's school uniform. <laughs> but it looked awful. With a beard. Yeah. And some guy tried to buy him a drink and he turned around and he went, why? He goes, oh my God. <laughs> Just scar the guy for yeah. life. He's like, my eyes. He's never gone near a schoolgirl again, potentially yeah. saving some. Yeah, well done. Mike's the secret hero in all this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's just there like with a cape on and his hands on his, on his hips like, yes, that's me. The man in the dress. I'm the hero this city needs. <laughs> oh no, it's dress man. Yeah. <laughs> or Mike man. No, whatever. We got him his Mike man again. He's... Everyone will be like, what's your name? You look, well, it's not Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Clever. But yeah, I think that the death is the easy way out. I think they need to be, they need to suffer. They need to be in a padded room like dark to deprave them of their senses either play lots well, of music is, or, um, but this is torture so what they deserve it either put them in a <laughs> either put them in a room with really annoying music or put them in you know one of those like recording studios that where they're padded yeah with that special foam so it cancels noise yeah if you put someone in that for a few hours apparently that's like torture yeah. Because it, it freaks them out. Because I we like get, it, I just go to sleep. We get so used to background <laughs> noise, it's so creepily and eerily quiet, it freaks us out, apparently. If you get someone to sit in it, they, they can't last more than a few hours. <laughs> you just go to sleep? Yeah, I you love would, it. You'd, you'd be like, ah, no background noise. It's like, he's falling asleep again, go and wake you up. Yeah. Like, so deprive them of their senses, and literally, whenever they do get human interaction, it's just open the door, throw food in, close the door. That's it. Lock them in a deep, dark hole. Yeah, make them, make them suffer. Uh, see, suffer not... like how they made... Like, when we watched Hannibal the other day, spoilers, because we've been watching this a lot, and we'll probably review it when we finish. There's a girl, and you op- they open up that little tunnel hatch, yeah. and she's in there, in water, in the dark. Yeah, but she'd only been put in there recently. Yeah, but Before could... that, she was kept in probably Hannibal's fucking house. Yeah, she probably was, but could you imagine being put in there for six months? Yeah. That would be awful. The only thing you hear is the occasional drip 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 that would send you insane yeah and if they're already pleading insane anyway maybe it'll fix them <laughs> fight fire with fire uh, insanity with insanity so what we do is okay so oh sorry sir you appear to have a you appear to be quite depressed yeah yeah i am 
Here's, here's Schindler's List. <laughs> we're going to make you watch Schindler's List and then Threads. Yeah, but... And we're going to fight your depression with, with depression. depression. Yeah, but the depressed person's not a serial killer. If they're already a sociopath or psychopath, they're never probably ever getting out again, so... No, that's whether true. Whether it fixes them or not is regardless. It's just a... It's basically me just saying it's a form of torture, and if they say, oh, I'm saying that, you're like, great, you're in a jail cell now. No, I, I <laughs> with all the other murderers. I, I don't agree with keeping them. Yeah. Um, just... Just get rid of them. Get rid of them. They're a drain on society. And you know, if they've got a family, kill them too. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I was going to say, man. <laughs> Take out the entire family line. Make so sure they don't get revenge. So nothing ever happens. No one ever gets revenge and nothing ever happens. We in saw the that on Harley Quinn, didn't we? Yeah. They killed everyone. Yeah. Like they were on like a park sort of family um, gathering, weren't they? That's like a cookout, wasn't it? Yeah. Barbecue. And uh, they literally slaughtered everyone. And she said, always make sure you kill the entire family line. Yeah, yeah. And the one guy gets away, doesn't yeah, he? And he, he gets powers. Yeah, and he tries coming after him. And she stabs him through the through the back of the head and goes, see, this is why you kill the entire family yeah, line. You see, if, I mean, if she'd have killed Batman's parents, yep. Gotham would be very different. Yeah, because she would have killed Batman as yeah. well. Yeah, she knows what she's doing. Yes. No room for sentimentality when you're a hardened criminal. Exactly. So you're you're a no, you're a no then not 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 for the not torture them, no, no but um, you're a no for not keeping them alive yeah I, just, I mean for, yeah you want them dead so. uh, yeah I just think you just because want to kill inherently people. everyone has a sense of self preservation yeah and that thing of like you're being walked to the guillotine and I do it like the old like they used to do it in the street yeah people throwing lettuce at them and stuff <laughs> as they're, yeah. they're sort of walked through yeah and then you know they drop the blade lift the head up. Yeah. You know? Show everyone. It still blinks because they're still probably conscious for three seconds. Yeah, apparently so. I think someone... I've heard figures ranging from like three seconds to 15 seconds. Yeah. That use every chance your brain is still alive. Could you say anything? I don't know because you've got Cause no... Because you've got, um, no, could you got you no lungs. Gargle anything. something out, maybe. I don't think... I think you'd be your case of your eyes and mouth moving. and But how much of your... That vision... Your brain is still interpreting... Yeah, and processing at that point. Yeah, the, maybe they're trying to scream, and that's why. Yeah, their mouth's moving. Yeah, so chances are probably that's the brain probably shutting down and trying yeah. to just tr try we, to switch you off. Because the the separation is so fast, the body doesn't actually know it's been killed. Yeah, it's like oh shit, what just happened? And it takes yeah. a few seconds. The body, oh my god, my my body's over there, my head's six foot in the air. So the the shock then takes would, a few would seconds. probably. Yeah, but then it switches you off. It's yeah, just kind of you... so you're not feeling all that pain all at once. Well, I don't. You feel any pain? To be fair, I don't know. I mean, your brain's still there. You might feel some psychological pain as you go. Oh. Yeah, it's because I guess the nerves wouldn't have time to kind of send those those shocks, those senses up the nervous system, would they? Because you'd, you'd be it's gone. <laughs> yeah, damn. Then one guy, I can't remember who it was. I think it was a French aristocrat during the revolution received a letter, and he was at the block. Yeah, and he said, "Put it in a basket. I'll read it later." <laughs> That's pretty badass. That is pretty badass. Yeah. I wonder if he read it. If his, <laughs> if his eyes were just there, he's like, damn, I can't read the last sentence. My nose is in the way. <laughs> Move my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so... I, I go for, I, I do think in certain circumstances, I think it's justified. Yeah. Because I don't see the point in keeping someone who's killed, like... 15 people. 15 people alive. I don't see the justice in that. Just yeah. end him. Yeah. And his family line. I mean, just him. <laughs> yeah, it kind of... I guess it gives closure to the victims, doesn't it? Yeah, I would be happier knowing they were dead... Yeah. ...than knowing that they're in a cell in prison where they might get killed because Jeffrey Dahmer was killed in prison. Yeah, yeah. Um, but chances are they probably won't be. Yeah. So I'd rather um, just sort of go, you know yeah. what? And in fact, if you want, you could let me press the button. Yeah. <laughs> I think the prison system needs more reforms. The worse your crime, the worse your punishment needs to be. Also, I think, I think they should be chained to a table and you should be allowed to go in there with a two by four for five minutes. Beat them up. Yeah. <laughs> but non-fatal. Non-fatal. Yeah. Yeah, I think there needs to be more reform and the less sort of, the less sort of level, the lower level crimes, you should be punished and put into a, a less severe sort of prison system and your, your higher level crimes they need to be I don't think that if you kill say three people or you say kill 15 people and eat people yeah you're probably going to be in the same cell 
Yeah. And it's like, well, surely that guy that kills and eats people is a lot more dangerous. If I was the guy that killed three people, I mean, that guy's a scumbag as well, but you wouldn't want to sleep at night, would you? No. You'd wake up and the guy would be chewing your arm. <laughs> so, I, I think... Or that, taking a slice of your cheek. Yeah. So I feel like it needs to be reformed to the point where these, like, mass murderers and these sort of serial rapists, they need more severe punishments. They need to be, I mean, it needs to be, like, special places just for them. You know when you're, like, if you're in jail and you piss them off and they put you, like, in, a, in isolation? Solitary they? confinement. Solitary confinement for, like, a month. Put them in there indefinitely. Well, Charles Bronson has been in there indefinitely, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. But he likes it. He likes it. He likes the peace and quiet. <laughs> he doesn't like other people, so... Yeah, but he's got a bed, he's got books. Don't give them anything. Don't give them anything. Take things away from them. Take their sight, their, their sight away from them by making the room dark all the time. I just got to sleep. Sensory deprivation. Yeah, but after a while, you'd wake up and you'd be like, was it day, is it night? There's nothing scarier for someone that it then... Like a lot of time, a lot of the times for um, when people are out and about on the streets, if there's like an eclipse, that makes people feel on edge. Yeah, because you know what you're saying. Because it, have you ever spoke to someone and like the eclipse makes me feel on edge? No. It's because it's almost like you know it's night and uh, it's day, and your body's telling you it's day, and then all of a sudden it's night. Yeah. And that freaks a lot of people out. I've I've spoken and met people that that feel that way. They get uncomfortable when when something sort of suddenly changes. You take away someone's sight indefinitely. Well, wouldn't, wouldn't it just be easier rather than keeping them in a in a dark hole? You could just like surgically remove their eyes. I guess you could, yeah. But no, because you want that hope. You want somebody to have. You want to. Well, put them back in. No, you want <laughs> you want somebody to open that cell once every day, and there'd be that really bright light, and you kind of struggle to see, and you don't know what time it's going to be, and then they just throw a piece of bread at your head. And slam the door you again. You die from malnutrition, then. Yeah, they'll throw enough food in there to keep you alive. You're not going to be very healthy, but it'll keep you alive. I don't. See, that just seems like that seems unnecessary cruelty. Good. Their victims probably went through a lot worse. They probably did, but I just go. You know what? Just get rid of this guy. Yeah. Do, they, do they deserve that? That humanity? That sort of um, yes, because we that have kindness? to set an example. I don't think so. I think that if they made people we suffer... We have to set an example by killing them. If, yeah. <laughs> we set an example of our own humanity by killing you them. You literally do what they were doing. Yes. Two we're wrongs more, Two wrongs do make a right. We're more humane than him. Two wrongs do make a right. America! <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah! But no, it's like... If they if they cause... If, I, if someone was murdered in my family by a mass murderer... I would prefer to know he was in a cell, suffering, barely able to eat, barely able to drink, life was agony for the next like 20 or 30 years than him to just be ended instantly. Give him radiation sickness, but then, oh, keep, yeah. but then keep him alive. So like give him low levels of it constantly. So he just constantly feels like he's going to die. <laughs> but then give him, what's the tablets they give you to try and combat it? Iodine. Iodine, yeah. Give, give him that. And then just give him a little bit more, then give him a little bit of that. Make that go on for 10, 15 years. <laughs> Let him suffer the way he made other families and people suffer. No, nah, just give me five minutes of a two by four and then change the desk and then you take him off and behead him in the street. You head him in the street. Yeah, I want it done in the street. Make an public... example of it so you can hold his head and be like, Aah! Yeah, then it'll go on a spike. <laughs> the very, crows will eat his eyes. Very medieval. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd also, honestly, uh, I'd bring back stocks for petty theft. So we can just throw tomatoes at them. Yeah, I, literally, I think that there's there needs to be shame yeah. brought back to be into fair, the justice system. I think that would be good for the economy because you could set up stalls outside yeah. selling like um, vegetables. It is a bit of a waste of food though. No, because you could get the rotten fruit like oh. when I was doing Tesco and that, chuck it all in the bins. Yeah. Even though now they're being told that they should try and give it to like like the homeless and stuff, shouldn't they, before it goes rotten. But anything that they are unable to save and it starts turning bad, yeah. stick it in the bucket, put it on there. It's a couple of quid per... Goes to charity. Yeah, goes to charity per piece of fruit. And you're like, well, that seems expensive. It's like, well, no, because you're not paying for the fruit. You get, you're getting to flog that guy. That's what you're paying for. You're going to throw this fruit at you? Yeah, you get you get a little bit of a curtain around it. So you'd be like, oh, oh sorry, you can't bring your rotten fruit from home. <laughs> That's not cool. No. If you want to flog this guy, you got to buy our patent pending fruit. <laughs> it's extra rotten. Yeah. And it's got worms. And it's got and worms. Maggots. 
And then and then people just come and they, they just throw fruit at him all day. Yeah, you know, just, and you, know, you have a star around your neck saying, I am a thief. Yeah. Well, that would be a bit harsh. No, I don't think so. You sh- make him ashamed. Make, because no one... Three days of flogging. <laughs> no, not flogging. Just throwing fruit at yeah. him. Just leaving him there in the stocks for a couple of days. Yeah. Don't give him water and food and what have you. Yeah. But leave him Humiliate there. him. Humiliate him because no one... Nobody likes to be publicly humiliated. That's true. For me... Being like, let's say I committed a crime, yeah, and they said, right, you can go to jail, and we won't release what you've actually done. There's a lot high or level. Or you of... can be put in, like, walk through the streets with a sign around your neck yeah. saying what you've done, or people fucking yeah. jeer at you and throw things at you. Yeah. Sometimes stones, not just rotten fruit. Yeah. And the entire community will know what you've done. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's more terrifying than going to jail. Yeah. There's a high level of dignity going to jail, isn't there? Obviously, it's not the most dignified thing ever but it's there's a high level of dignity in it because it's like when you leave you can leave in your clothes and then you turn up there and it's all behind doors obviously yeah. you have to strip search and stuff but none of your friends family neighbors none of, no one sees that so when you come out and you get your clothes back and you come back home nobody knows the humiliation you've been through no no one you'll ever see again does but if you make them walk through the street they can walk through the streets in just their underwear and they're chained up and you're chucking shit at them. Yeah. That's humiliating with a big sign going, I, I was a rapist yeah. on it. If it says that They still go to jail for that too, though. Yeah, you obviously. throw your fruit at them for three or four days and you ship them off. Yeah. But then even say if they got out in 20 or 30 years, you'd still have stuff like, you, you could literally be like, oh, look, that's the guy that I flogged when I was a teenager. <laughs> that's the guy I threw fruit at. Hey, that's Jerry the Rapist. Yeah, everyone would know him because you would have paraded him through the streets. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. That makes sense. And then, so, and then a large nun with a bell going, shame, shame, shame. shame. Yeah, as he walks by. Yeah. It's like mandatory for if you've not got anything on that day to go see him. <laughs> and just say, shame. Shame. And throw and just rotten, point at him, yeah. Just throw horse shit at him. Yeah. Shame. Or her. You know, let's not be yeah. sexist. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with that. Right, so there we go. We've reformed the justice system. Yeah, just shame them, then ship them off for jail. Yeah. Yeah. Or the death sentence, whatever they've done. Yeah. You could even put it on billboards, couldn't you? You could be holding that sign saying, I am, and then whatever crime he's done. Yeah. With his sign there, and put it on the billboard for two weeks. That's it, yeah. Just so when he comes out, everyone will be like, oh, that was the guy that was on the billboard for two weeks. I mean, like some dude that's got pictures of kids on his laptop. He may not have ever fucked kids, but yeah. he's got pictures of them on his laptop. Stick him outside of the side when he's like saying, I think it's okay to download pictures of naked children. Yeah. And see how long he lasts. Put him in just his underwear holding the side. No, just keep it. Just make him, he, can, he can get clothed. Don't want him in his underwear. But one of the biggest humiliations for humans is for them to be nude. Because it well, like, okay. they, they bear. Obviously, you can't do that because like, nobody wants to see completely naked people. Because we're a civilised society. Yeah. <laughs> kind of in this sort of scenario. <laughs> But it's it's humiliating. They always say if you're afraid to talk at uh, public speak, imagine them in their underwear because it's embarrassing for them to be in their underwear. So then you feel like you have that superiority over them because you're clothed. Yeah. You're bearing all your weaknesses or all your imperfections, aren't you? So and that's the idea behind it is if yeah. he's in his underwear and he stood there with a sign, he's humiliated. He's getting shit thrown at him. And everyone's like, ah, oh, look how fat he is. Wow, oh, look how pe- how small his penis looks. Yeah, I mean, for me, with my, my superfluous third nipple and massively massive dong. Yeah. You know. <laughs> what can I say? This is just going to intimidate people, is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's swinging my female legs. You're like, damn, I can't commit a crime, otherwise I'm going to intimidate the townspeople. <laughs> Every woman in town will be wanting my baby gravy. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> We're doing so well. And then you lowered the tone. It's what I do. It's my thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's what I do. Yeah. It's who I am. It's who you are. That's why all these people keep committing crimes around me. <laughs> you break them, don't you? You mentally break them. <laughs> I don't even know I'm doing it. Yeah. <laughs> you just tell cheesy jokes non-stop till they snap. <laughs> and then, like, they're like, ha, ha, ha. And then they just walk off and kill three people. <laughs> they're like, see you tomorrow, Dave. And he's like, see you tomorrow, Ben. <laughs> I used to have a mate called Stealthy Dave. Stealthy Dave. Yeah. Is he stealthy at killing people? I don't know, he used to appear beside you. Did he? You're like, you know, Dave, where'd you come from? Uh, he just like a peer, like, right? <laughs> um, anyway, on that note. Yeah, I, I, I think that um, it's good to have it, I guess, if that's sort of part of the justice system in whichever country it is. But I, I do think that we should just abolish it and just think of more creative ways of making these people suffer. 
for long periods of time. Well, fair enough. Maybe I'm the more humane one in this situation. I think you might be. Uh, someone's got to be. Yeah. Usually it's me. <laughs> it's almost never you. <laughs> <laughs> Why does everyone say that? You're yeah. like anarchy and blood in the streets. Ah! <laughs> Revolution, comrades. <laughs> and it's like Ben, you're at a festival. <laughs> Calm down. Well, I'm passing the weed. It's just a beer festival. <laughs> passing the weed. Just, just have, have a beer and calm down. <laughs> yeah, you always turn into a bloodthirsty dictator when you're not drunk. <laughs> yeah, have a couple of beers and calm down. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I've been Ben thanks for listening don't drink the flavour aid don't join a cult maybe give a listen to Quentin for the Ball in the post-truth apocalypse as well if you have time thank you and I've been Sean thanks for listening see you soon still haven't worked out that last line yet not yet